Princess and the Pea by Lauren Child, captured by Polly Boland. Once upon a time, many moons ago, of course, there was a king and a queen who had a prince for a son. He was a nice boy and not unpleasant to look at. In fact, handsome. Not too handsome, just handsome enough. One day when the prince was old enough, his parents decided it was time for him to be married. You know what parents are like, and a prince's parents are no different. The prince didn't object to the idea, but he did make one condition. He wanted to marry for love. He was just that kind of romantic boy. He told his father and his mother, I'll gladly marry tomorrow, but wherever she is, she must be more mesmerizing than the moon. And I must find her more fascinating than all the stars in the sky. And there must be a certain something about her. What something? asked the queen. Just something, replied the prince. Yes, yes, agreed the king. That's all very lovely, but our condition is that she must be a princess of blue blood and equal in royalness to you. The prince wasn't all that interested in these details, but knew he wouldn't get any peace until he agreed. So he did. Now you may think finding yourself a suitable princess would be easy to do if you are a handsome prince, but you would be wrong. Just how many mesmerizing and fascinating princesses do you imagine there are out there? Well, the king and queen did all the traditional fairy tale things in order for their son to be bowled over by the right girl. They threw a royal ball and invited all the single royal girls in the land. Everyone said yes. Everyone danced. Everyone had a good time. But none of them captured the prince's heart. The prince explained to the king and the queen how simply none of them was mesmerizing or fascinating. And none of them, not one of them, had a certain something about them. No. If he couldn't marry for love, then he would rather live alone for all eternity, gazing at all the stars in the night sky. Not only was he romantic, but also a little dramatic. The king and the queen said, The thing is, our dear son, what you're really looking for is a real princess, and a real princess is a rare thing indeed. They do not grow on trees, said the king. No, no, they do not, said the queen. You see, said the king, a real princess is not only mesmerizingly beautiful and fascinatingly interesting, but most important of all, she has manners, said the queen. No one should ever travel without them, said the king. No, never. Never go anywhere without your manners, agreed the queen, taking her elbows off the table. The only problem with real princesses, sighed the king, is that they are terribly hard to get hold of, and they almost never read their posts. No, indeed, said the queen. Real princesses are very hard to come by. No one has ever found one by looking. You just have to wait for one to come to you.
But the prince, who really listened to his mother's advice, did the traditional fairy tale find yourself a bright thing of riding far and wide looking throughout the kingdom for a real princess. He even rode far and wide to other people's kingdom. But in Farland, all the girls he met were fascinatingly beautiful, but horribly vain. And in the kingdom of Skonan, they were all mesmerizingly clever, but exceedingly dull. And in Avonia, there was a certain silliness about them. I mean, you can see his problem, can't you? The prince came back very downcast. He refused to eat anything for supper. Not even the very delicious rook pie the royal cook had prepared as a welcome home. He lit a candle in his window and just stood and gazed into the night sky. Now, not so far away in the treetop house, just over the mountain, there was a girl with the most beautiful black, black hair you have ever seen or possibly never seen. She woke up that night to see the moon dancing on a ceiling and she popped on her favorite green pea dress and glided down the stairs into the garden. The moonlight shone in such a magical way that she wondered to herself if it could possibly look as beautiful on the other side of the garden wall. So she tripped down the garden path, stepped over a pile of unopened letters, and slipped through the gate where she saw the moon perched on top of the mountain. I wonder if the moon would be as beautiful up there, she thought out loud. And it was, so she continued walking right down the other side of the mountain until she came to the wild woods. Would it be so beautiful in the woods? Consider the girl. And it was, it really was. But just as she came out of the woods, a dark cloud moved across the moon and suddenly it wasn't. Bother, thought the girl. She could feel a heavy storm brewing. She would never make it back on her own little tree house in time. There was nothing for it but to walk on. So on she walked. She had not gone more than seven steps when she felt the first heavy drop of rain fall on her cheek. Bother, thought the girl. Within three minutes, she was already soaked to the skin and her two shoes were filling with water. The wind was howling, the trees were creaking and cracking, as if they might part company with their roots. And the rain pounded down, and the lightning flashed its forked tongue in the blackened sky. And the girl began to tire. It was not umbrella weather, no, an umbrella would have done you no good at all. Hmm, I think I might just catch a terrible cold unless I have the very good fortune to spot a light in a window. But what is the likelihood of that on this wild, wild night in the middle of nowhere? 
said the girl out loud. However, as she made her way around the next corner, that's exactly what she saw. Using her very last drop of energy, she climbed the steep, steep steps to the huge front door. The queen was woken all of a sudden by a very, very loud knock at the palace door. Being a queen, she sensibly woke her husband, an unusually heavy sleeper, and asked him to go and see who in all the kingdom might be banging on the door at this time of the night for goodness sake. When the king opened the door, what he saw was a dripping wet girl standing, without even a coat, on his doorstep. She had long raven black hair and skin as pale as ivory and lips as red as rose petals. You know how it is with these fairy tale types. She was, despite the effect of the weather, a real beauty. But she was also shivering cold and looked as if she might collapse any moment. Of course, the king was very polite. He had manners. That's the thing about real kings. Their manners are impeccable. He didn't even mention the large puddle that was forming on his very expensive royal floor. Instead, he told the girl to warm herself by the fire while he called for his wife. Who didn't particularly want to get up on such an unreasonable night. But being a real queen, never ever forgot to be hospitable to strangers. The queen thought, this girl looked special. There was something mesmerizing, something fascinating, something, something that the queen could not quite put her finger on. Unlike her husband, she came straight to the point. So my dear, who are you on such a wild and unruly night? Oh, I am a princess, and I live in a tree house on the other side of the mountain. A tree house, pondered the king. A princess, inquired the king, the queen. What kind of princess? Oh, I, replied the princess, I am a real princess. I was outside admiring the moon when it started to rain and then what the thunder and lightning well then I lost my way and then I saw a light in your window I do hope you can forgive my waking you at such an hour the queen thought well she sounds like a real princess she looks like a real princess but we'll see so after the girl had finished her elderflower cordial, the queen ordered a steaming hot bath and supplied her with the softest towels and an exquisite nightgown. Oh, this is far too good for me, said the, prince, the girl, which of course is exactly the kind of thing a princess would say. While the girl was taking her bath, the queen had the servant make up the bed in the most unusual fashion. She chose the most fabulous bedchamber with the most beautiful four-poster bed. Then right in the middle of the bed, she placed a tiny, tiny green pea, green from the royal garden. Then on top of the pea, she piled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve feather mattresses. And on top of the twelve mattresses, she placed the finest lining sheets and the plumpest Siberian goose down pillows. 
What a beautiful bed, caps the quick girl. Oh, I am sure I will sleep like a real princess in this bed. And up the ladder she climbed. We'll see, thought the queen. But the night, but that night, the poor girl hardly slept a wink. She was tossing and turning all night. Despite her exhaustion, she could not make herself comfortable. Well, worse still, the next morning she found she was black and blue and rather aching. At daybreak, the queen knocked on the door with a cup of tea. How did you sleep, my dear? I trust comfortably. Not wanting to be rude, the girl replied, Oh, well, very well. Yes, perfectly. Thank you so much for asking. Aha, thought the queen. I knew she couldn't really be a real, real princess. But what the queen was forgetting was that any real princess has such impeccable manners that it would be impossible for her to tell her host who, who had gone all the effort of making her a bed stacked with 12 feather mattresses that in fact it was the most uncomfortable night that she had ever had in all her life. The queen, though most disappointed, invited her young guest to have breakfast down in the royal dining room. When the prince saw the girl, his eyes lit up. He thought she was more mesmerizing than the moon. And when she spoke, he found her more fascinating than the stars. And there was a certain something about her that caused him to let go of his teacup, which clattered to the floor. The princess couldn't help thinking there was something romantic, something dramatic, something strangely charming about his clumsiness. And she bent down to pick up the cup. A real princess will always pick up your teacup if you drop it. Kindness is practically their middle name. But this was not the only reason she did so. There was a light in the prince's dark eyes which reminded her of all the stars in the night sky. Mm. It did not escape the queen's notice that as the girl bent down, she let out a cry, something a bit like, ouch. Whatever is the matter, my dear, asked the king. Oh dear, I am all aches and pains today and I just don't know why why and i feel so awful when you went through so much effort and how ungratefully i must seem and i hope you'll forgive me but there was nothing to forgive because as anyone will know a girl who can turn blue and black when a tiny tiny pea green garden pea is placed on the 12 feather mattresses must just surely be a real princess the prince, who was not very bothered about this detail, simply said, There's a certain something about you. And the girl smiled and told him her name. And after the moon had risen and set several more times, the prince asked the girl to marry him. That's the thing about real princes. They know all the right questions to ask. And she, being a bright girl, as all real princesses are, knew a real prince when she saw one. And she said yes. And they were married in a very real fashion outside in the garden where the sky twinkled with stars. And the moon shone down and everyone had a splendid time. 
these were not served because as everyone knows real princesses are not especially fond of peas 